ladies of el salón the chronicles oye ladies of el salón the chronicles escucha ladies of el salón so we're gonna give you um what i call the wash where i can either fluff and fold your dirty laundry or air it out to dry so we're going to tap into a conversation that we had on our previous um, recording where we were talking about uh, toxic work environment with, uh, with men. And we were talking about Cuomo in particular, how now he is uh, being accused or, or, you know, women are coming out now accusing him of uh, being uh, sexually uh, inappropriate at work inappropriate at work or you know just like the environment at work where when you have to deal with someone of his stature uh whether it be someone like him or or an executive at work and women sometimes feel like they have to um laugh it off which i think a lot of women do when a man at work says something you're like oh yeah okay you know and it's and then you feel like should i have checked him or was i okay with just making believe like that didn't even happen um i had made a reference that I work construction, so it's toxic 24-7 <laughs> at my job. I mean, it's just, it's toxic. It's just toxic. It, it doesn't even matter if it has to be a woman-to-male relationship, just even male with male. It's just a very toxic environment. And I had said that I can probably say a lot of things that are inappropriate in my job, but I know how to kind of separate it and I know how to handle myself. And I think that that came off as me being a accepting and maybe it is maybe I am accepting that type of environment because um you know like I said sometimes when you say something you walk around with like the scarlet letter and it's like that's the one that went around snitching on all the co-workers that she was sexually harassed when we were just joking we were just having a good time but when does a joke go too far and when do you check it you know so one of our listeners and Mari can jump in one of our listeners kind of said um, about the whole Cuomo situation, why these women are coming out now, why these w women are speaking out, has nothing to do with him being reelected or the elections or him running for president. It has something to do with uh, another scandal something. he's involved in. Right, so, scandal. yeah, so our listener call, um, called in and was like, because we were wondering, like, this, why is this happening now when this happened so long ago? And it's not to take away from whatever the issue is and how the women felt. But we were just kind of curious about like, okay, what's, what's the angle here? And one of our callers, one of our listeners called in and gave us some insight on the angle. So I'm going to go ahead and play the audio. The scandal with these women coming forward now is not about his uh, election for governor in 2022, nor is it to hurt his chances at president in the future. Otherwise they would have waited until he was the Democratic uh, nominee against the Republican nominee, and then they would have launched these attacks against him. The cover-up is the fact that he passed emergency legislation at the beginning of the pandemic, giving hospital and nursing home executives complete immunity, and then passed laws forcing old people, the residents of these nursing homes, back into the nursing homes, even when they tested positive for COVID. So taking them out of hospitals and putting them back in the nursing homes with the most vulnerable population, and then hiding the number of deaths. At first it was reported in the amount of, I think, uh, 600, then it was 1,000, then it was 1,500. The number of deaths in the nursing homes was grossly underreported. This is what's coming out in the Attorney General Letitia James's investigation. And Cuomo passed the laws giving the nursing home executives and the hospital executives immunity for enforcing the laws to put them back in the nursing homes. And he received $1.5 million from the association that represents nursing homes and hospitals. So they put a $1.5 million in his campaign fund and he passed laws to protect them. And then he forced them to go back into the nursing homes, which under the laws for COVID gave the nursing homes more money per patient. That's the scandal that's being overlooked because all of a sudden, a couple of Me Too women, I'm not under uh, value or devaluate, devaluing their, their, uh, their claims, but a couple of women are saying, he tried to kiss me? And he, he verbally told me that he would have a relationship with someone in their 20s? Is that the same as Harvey Weinstein trying to throat fuck you if you don't do what he says and blacklisting you from your career for the rest of your life? Not even close. Is that the same as mm -hmm. Jeffrey Epstein trafficking women with the help of, like, 
possibly Bill Clinton and stuff like that. Not even close. He is a bumbling idiot when it comes to women, and he has a position of power, so he gets some tail every now and then, and he's creepy. There's no one saying that he fucked anyone, touched anyone, threatened... Well, uh, the idea that perhaps as the boss that you threaten someone's career implicitly, that's real. Uh, but the scandal is, this Me Too shit is covering up the fact that he killed, or his laws, uh, killed thousands of elderly people, and he got money for it. That's the scandal. Wow. Okay. That's very interesting. So that was, uh, yeah, that was a mouthful. Um, yeah, so I wanted to uh, play that because, uh, you know, we always encourage our listeners to, you know, correct us if we're wrong. We're just El Salon. We're just women talking shit. So, um, you know, and we all have our opinions. And I know Zuli had concerns about how she came across or whatever, but we were all really wondering, like, what is behind this? Like, it just seems like why all of this right now? And I guess that's that's a good explanation. That that kind of makes more sense to me. Ladies of El Salon, the Chronicles. Oh, yeah. Ladies of El Salon, the Chronicles.